Hello and welcome back to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'd like to share this um, old demo of mine of a bluebell wood. As we're approaching spring, I'm really looking forward to going for walks through the bluebell woods in our local area. And I'm thinking of revisiting the subject and maybe sort of doing an updated version of a bluebell wood here. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing that. Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be having another experimental painting session, trying to paint something I've never painted before and that's a bluebell wood. Um, I'm using Sanders Waterford cold press paper. It's taped to my board. My board's at an angle of about 45 degrees and it's taped with ordinary decorator's masking tape. I'm going to start off with a layer of wet in wet across the whole painting. So I'm using my large Ron Ranson Pro Art Harky brush to wet the paper all over. It's a warm day here, so I'm making sure that I thoroughly soak the paper because it's drying off a little bit more quickly than usual. I want to create an underpainting where I've got lots of um, light coming through um, the lovely new spring green leaves that you get in sort of early spring when the woods are filled with bluebells. So I'm using cadmium yellow and sap green here to try and get a kind of um, graduated wash, I suppose, wet in wet, lots of lovely diffusions going on um, to get that sort of background glow. And then I'll paint my wood over that. Across the foreground, I'm leaving plenty of unpainted paper. Um, and once I've got the background in, then I'll wash out my Harky brush and use a mixture of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson and put in some lovely rich bluish violet streaks and allow that to diffuse and soften together um, in different sort of concentrations to give me that underpainting and that basis for my carpet of bluebells on the woodland floor. Well, that's the idea. Let's, let's hope, hope it'll work. Just getting in lots of lovely texture and tone um, quite quickly so that it will all soften and diffuse and I'll get a nice subtle sort of backlit effect when I put my trees in. still working quite quickly while the paper is still all nice and wet or damp at least. Um, I've changed my rigger brush. It's a graduate, De La Rowney graduate um, number two rigger and this is burnt umber and I'm putting in um, these sort of mostly vertical marks for distant trees. They should just soften back nicely and some of them will sort of almost disappear into the background and some will just stay there looking sort of like mid-ground, soft, distant trees. I'll put in a few sort of crisscross branches, not too many, and hopefully, as I said, it will all soften back and um, then I can paint over over these um, distant trees. This is a store card, a plastic store card, and I'm using the corner to pull through the paint and to create some more different marks, a variety of lighter marks and, and some darker marks where the paint's still very wet. And I get a nice variation of marks. Now I'm using a stiff hog bristle brush and I'm going to spatter in mixtures of the ultramarine blue and then I'm going to drop in a mixture of ultramarine blue and white gouache um, to start off a sort of much more paler, sort of delicate um, look to this base for my bluebells. Here's my mixture and you can see that colour is, um, is lovely, it's quite opaque. Um, because the gouache has been added, but I think it'll just give me that nice, light, 
um, carpet of flowers mixed with the pure um, ultramarine blue and the hints of alizarin crimson. There's a full two-part tutorial of this showing just about every brush stroke on my Patreon page. So if you think that might be the sort of thing that you'd be interested in, please follow the link below. So now I'm happy with that as an underpainting. It needs to dry completely and I'll come back and continue with the painting. It's now completely dry and I like the soft look. I've managed to keep the light that I wanted to across the background behind the trees. Now I'm taking my rigger brush again and this time with Payne's Grey I'm putting in my foreground trees which I want to sort of look sort of more sort of silhouetted against the light. I'm just very loosely painting the tree trunks and branches of these closer trees. I'm working between the marks that I made earlier in the wet in wet stage of the painting so that they will show through but working across some of them too. I want to build up a group of trees on the left and then another group of trees on the right, sort of small woodland trees, quite sort of dainty and delicate. Just looking for an impression, not, not a realistic painting at all. Remember, this is an experiment. I'm sort of um, just trying out ideas. And so far, I think it's going to be OK. I think it's going to work, especially when I um, use my um, Matthew Palmer tree and texture brush um, later on to put in the impression of the carpet of flowers. When I'm painting branches with the rigger brush, I try and taper off the branches um, as they get finer and towards the ends when they get become more sort of twiggy. And that gives um, quite a nice sort of realistic effect. I'm pulling some of the branches across that very light gap there in the middle and that will sort of um, draw attention to that extra light spot just there I hope and and then eventually when the flowers are in it should keep the eye focused on the effects of the flowers. If you decide to paint along with this, um, you can obviously paint in as many or as few trees and branches at this stage as you like. Uh, but take your time. Um, there's no rush because we're painting with um, inky consistency um, wet paint onto a dry painting. So there's no rush and no hurry. And, and these trees form quite an important part of the finished look. So I think it's good to get them right um, or at least effective as a sort of a lacy tracery of branches across most of the painting. As you can see when I finish my brush strokes I will always pull it across the tape either at the sides or at the top so that when the tape's removed I've got branches that go off and kind of are cut off by the mark of the tape. Now I'm taking my white gouache and this is the Matthew Palmer stippling brush which I shall add details about in the description below and I'm going to 
use it to mix a sort of mixture of ultramarine blue, white gouache, and maybe a hint of alizarin crimson, and get some of this lovely pale blue across the woodland floor. I think this stippling gives a lovely effect for the carpet of hundreds, hundreds and thousands of bluebells. I can add in some darker pure ultramarine which will work its way into the wet paler blue and give me some shadows. I can add some green in there if I want to. If you wanted to, you could even introduce a little bit of pure alizarin crimson for some little pink flowers um, amongst the bluebells. The possibilities here are endless for this sort of technique and I'm quite liking the way it's building up. I can see the potential here for more of these sorts of uh, flower paintings. I'll certainly be trying to paint bluebell woods again after this. It's given me lots of different ideas. And that's the good thing about experimenting with things is that you can get some really good ideas and become inspired to try all sorts of other different things. And don't worry if your experiments sometimes don't work out. I mean, they don't always. I've got hundreds of um, failed experiments, but I've always learned something from them. I've learned what not to do, or I've learned how to maybe approach the same sort of thing again with more success. Um, practice and experimentation, as I always say, is really one of the main ways to to progress and not to be too judgmental of yourself as you paint, not to worry about whether, you're, whether your painting is any good. It doesn't matter. What's important is you're learning and you're enjoying the process and that you're able to progress by analysing um, what you like and what you don't like about the painting. I think I'm just about happy with that now. I think just a few little marks across that tree line ridge there. I think just some loose bluebells uh, peeping out above ground there. And now I'm going to wash out the stippling brush and now I'm using sap green with a little bit of perylene green in it. And I'm going to stipple over the branches to create these lovely fresh spring and or early summer leaves. When you use a brush like this it's important that you make sure that it's not too wet um, and dab out any excess water onto a cloth or a paper towel um, otherwise you'll flood the paper and you won't end up with the stippling effect, the sort of dotty effect that you're looking for going to put some green just here and there amongst the bluebells which will just add more shape and shadow and texture. And I think I'm going to leave it there and um, I'm going to call this one finished because I think if I go much further with it I'm in danger of overworking it. So I'm going to peel the tape off and pulling it away from the painting. And as you can see, with a nice clean white border, it really brings the painting together. I think that's one of my favourite moments with this sort of fairly successful painting is how beautiful it looks with the border. And if you look closely, you can see that there isn't really any detail there. Most of it is just brush strokes and little dots and lines and things like that and sort of... Um, nicely diffused, transparent washes, that sort of thing. Um, and that's what I think loose painting is all about. It's combining um, these different techniques and textures and ending up with a result that you're pleased with. I just decided I needed a little bit of fresh cadmium yellow here and there um, on the edges of some of those sort of leafy canopies. So I'm just adding that just to brighten things up a bit. It will dry back a little paler than that, but yeah, I'm happy now. That's um, catching the sunlight quite nicely.
Well, I hope you found that old demo useful and maybe you'll have a go at a bluebell wood. They're such fun things to paint and can be really beautiful and really evocative of early spring and the promise of summer. If you enjoyed the video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. It's free to do and it really helps with our reach. And don't forget to let me know um, in the comments below if you'd like me to do an updated bluebell wood for you this spring. And thank you so much to everybody that supports us on Patreon, either through Morgana's Patreon group or mine. Please follow the links below if you're interested in supporting us. I'll see you again soon. Take care, have a lovely weekend and happy painting.